the fact that these rooms aren't full anymore, the fact that you've been able to both financially sustain the district and there haven't been large protests associated with those elements, the fact that um, my kid will grow up in an area that, that'll have a very different water future, it's because of you. I mean, this is nearly single-handedly, we're able to take something that seemed insurmountable and you made it possible, Ron. And uh, the community owes you a massive debt of gratitude and, and Manu and I wanted to, to do this proclamation but really wanted to publicly honor the success of this board and Ron's leadership uh, because he's handing it over to somebody in much better shape than he found it, which is the true measurement of a leader, which is handing it to somebody to carry on and make it better. Uh, you took what was broken and fixed it, and, and Ron, we admire you for it. So congratulations on that. Thank you both. Josh, or, thank you very much for taking yeah, thank, the time, you guys. Yeah, thank you for coming. Uh, do we have public comment on something like this? We should request to see if there's any. Okay. Uh, any public comment? All right. Okay. Well, good. <laughs> well, let's see. I'm not. So. <laughs> <laughs> Ron's going to cut me off. Uh, I'm Allison Violante. I am Chief of Staff for Supervisor Zach Friend, and I've had the pleasure of working with Ron for several years now. I sit on the Mid-County Groundwater Agency, which I've had direct pleasure of working with him both in his role here and there. And Ron, you have such a vision um, of what Supervisor Friend said of taking it from a system that was really in dire straits to a place that we really have found sustainability. And not only in terms of water sustainability, but as an agency. I think what no one here has really talked about today is the stability you brought to Soco Creek. Um, the team you've built um, is, has stayed and has rallied around you to create the environment that we are today. And I think that it takes real leadership to do that uh, because it can be scary to um, follow someone towards sustainability and towards these projects that are not popular. Um, but you found teams, you hired people that were willing to go there with you, and that's a real testimony to you and seeing the potential in your staff, to motivating them to follow you there, and then to carry on after you leave. And that's a legacy in your team. It's a legacy in the projects you've helped build. And I've had real pleasure of being um, with you and part of that journey, and I just thank you for what you've done for our community, and know that your legacy will live on in, in not only what you've built in infrastructure, but also in the people that you've helped mentor and lead and just thank you so much for helping us get there. So I will miss you, friend, and congratulations on your retirement. Thank you, Allison. Okay. Any other? Yeah. <laughs> Ronnie, keeps going on, keeps going on. <laughs> no, I'm really hey, worried. Thank you for coming. Bye. I'm Martin Mills. I'm the owner and operator of Pure Source Water. We serve 77 houses in the uh, Aptos Hills area, Redwood Drive. Um, and I just wanted to say um, thank you, Ron, because I know as a fellow general manager of a water system, though on a much smaller scale, um, I know the long hours and many hats that you must wear in your role. Um, and just from my eyes on the outside, not affiliated with this organization at all, or even, I don't even actually get water from your district most of the time, but I appreciate your work and all you've done and advocated for in your work. And I just uh, wish you all the best in this next phase. Thank you, Martin. I really appreciate that. Okay.
Okay. President Jaffe, we're ready when you are. All right, welcome back. Thanks for hanging tight for that. So, since we're recording now, I'll read, I'll read again. Item, we're on administrative business, item 7.3, consideration of emergency water service agreement renewals and inclusion of monthly emergency service connection fees for Pure Source Water, Inc. and Trout Gulch Mutual Water Company. Okay. Great. Um, thank you, President Jaffe. I'll, I'll start this off. So just to be clear, the purpose of tonight's meeting of this item is to consider the renewal uh, emergency service agreements with both Pure Source Water and Trout Gulch and potential implementation of an emergency water connection fees to, to address potential equitability um, in sharing the costs and maintaining the district's water systems or customers. Um, this item was requested by the board two years ago when the next renewal came up, and so in, so happens that they both coincide at the same time. Uh, before I launch into it, I would recognize that we have, um, like to recognize we have representatives from both agencies here. We've got Martin and Jennifer. They're both op operators and owners of the Pure Source system. Yeah. Uh, and then Frank and Robert, uh, in reverse, vice president and president of uh, Trout Gulch, who are here tonight, too. And I'd just like to take a second to say thank you all. Uh, you know, I think Martin alluded to it, uh, that it's not easy running a water agency. Uh, and my hat's off to, to both, all y'all, you know. Um, I, I think uh, Pure Source, you've, you've come a long way. She sent me an email this morning, Martin, said, hey, we crested 50% on the meter installations in a couple last week, too. So the progress is there. And uh, Trout Gulch, I think 10 years ago, I don't know if disarray is the right word, but your system was in, in a lot of help, need of a lot of help, and you've made it. You've, you've come there. So uh, the new piping, six inch, I think, uh, water piping throughout, wonderful website. So my hat's off. And, and in addition to that, uh, very appreciative. I know Patricia's not here tonight, but she's their uh, general manager for Trout Gulch. Martin is kind of their, their GM in a sense. But uh, for the collaborative process you've taken, you know, you've worked with us throughout, I, I would say it's been several months at a minimum, uh, dialogue back and forth. While they may not agree with exactly what's in the memo, it was, um, I think, a really insightful uh, conversations on both sides and uh, some great tips because they had seen a draft memo and, and provided some super input to that. So with that, I'll, I'll, I'll provide a little orientation here and then get to the punchline. And of course, I'm sure you'll want to hear the representatives speak. Um, you know, and one more accolade. Uh, we're coming to the meeting uh, today, and Melanie's like, so are you prepared? I said, yeah, I, I got it all. I've written the memo. I've got it all in my head. And uh, she goes, oh, great. And so um, she put these slides together, and thank you for that, because I think they're going to be really good visuals to help us. So that's just a little piece of how uh, I think the staff covers each other at SoCal Creek Water District. So what you see in front of you in our GI, yeah, it's a team effort. I'm sure there's multiple people, but I think you kicked it off. So it, it happens all the time, and this is just a, a good example I can present. So what you see in front of you is a map just to orient us all. It's, it's a great map of um, uh, where Trout Gulch is located relative to our district, pure source, and Santa Cruz on the left, Central Water District on the right, and then in the, in the uh, reds, you can see Trout Gulch Mutual and Pure Source in case you were kind of wondering where they were. You know, Soquel Creek was actually, a, it is a conglomeration of, of, I think, three or four agencies. So it's, there were several agencies like that before we kind of consolidated. In the basin, yeah, our entire basin that the Mid-County Groundwater Agency overseas is, is shown there. So the next slide we'll pull up, just give you some facts about each of these agencies. Uh, yeah, Pure Source, uh, 77 residential connections. I won't have to read them all. I think they're unique because they're privately owned, regulated by the California Public Utilities Commission. 
Um, they have a one inch connection to the district. And I think it's important to note, we have very low pressure where we give them water. So I think in the memo it says we give them about a quarter of what a one inch uh, connection would normally provide. It dumps into a tank and then you take the water from there. I think that's a, um, it's indicated with that next item, low pressure there. Uh, 37 connections are metered, but drum roll please, that number's been increased, is that right? To 40, so um, been hustling, especially in, in recent times. So they don't use, you know, this is about an emergency connection and they don't use the connections a lot, uh, but we see it as kind of like an insurance policy the value is not so much in the use, but in the availability to have it if they need it. Um, and there's a there's a cost burden by our our ratepayers to be able to provide uh, keep our system where it should be to be able to do that. Um, now, Martin, I'm going to pause there. I think you had a handout that you wanted to provide. Okay, so let's not forget that when you get up to speak. And if you if you want to do it now, we can we can provide that out. Melanie, can you help? Since Taj is not there, I thought he was going to hand it up. Um, okay. Hey. Robert, y'all y'all didn't have anything, correct? Nothing. Okay. And so, I think we should take this up to the board. I think the. Oh, you're going to do it? Yeah, right to the board. And I'll let I'll I'll let Martin speak to this when the time comes. I just wanted to get it out there. I think the chart that shows the red shows um, the times they've used water, and there's one big period there in 2016, which accounts for the bulk of the water they used. And he can elaborate more on that um, if he wishes. So that's pure source. And um, let's go to the next slide, please. So Trout Gulch is a, a little bit bigger, a little over twice as big. 185 connections. Uh, I've already spoke to how they brought things up uh, to, to par uh, really well in the last 10 years. They have a four inch connection to the district and all their connections are metered. I don't know if it was Mitch on the last side, but uh, Trout Pure Source only has about half, a little over half of theirs metered. And I know that was a reason I bring that out because when we originally had these agreements, that was kind of a um, a big deal to the board because we were in such dire straits, right? And felt that was important. Uh, an emergency, their Trout Gulch, because of their progress, their emergency connect, their emergency agreements were on renewal every five years. Pure Source was every two. It's been at a 10 year interval, so they, they've coincided. So that's where we're at uh, tonight. And again, the board asked us to bring this back after reviewing Pure Source. Um, uh, agreement last time and the draft agreements are in the uh, in the packet so you know the st staff looked at this in many ways we had lots of conversations there's different perspectives I think to, there's many ways that one could make an argument to weigh this might should be costed or that sort of thing one you know the typical thing is we have a um, we have a certain size connection with somebody we charge them a certain amount through Prop 218, but this differs differs for several reasons. Um, one specifically with Pure Source, so they don't get the amount of water that would normally come out. But two, these connections are locked off, and they're only available when they request it. We have to go unlock it. They have to communicate with us and re and, and report back certain information. So it's not a, a use at will. Uh, type of situation. There's another big one too, and I'm escaping my mind. But that that sets it up to not be charged as a regular, uh, like a regular customer, because they're not a regular customer, right? Extra, and they're extratorial. But they also, so so anyway, they're they're not a regular customer. So that but that sets it up to say, okay, then what? Is there an appropriate fee that uh, we should be asking of them considering there is a certain amount of work, not just with providing them water, because they do provide the uh, flat rate when, it, when we do provide them, but, you know, 
there's certain requirements in the uh, agreements. We have to check certain things. We have to send our crews out. So there's that too. But I think in the bigger picture, it's just having that readily available. I know the board in the last rate hearing moved the fixed fee for our customers up from around 45% to 65, 60, 60, thank you. And, and that was on the premise of, uh, it's not so much about the water you use, it's about having the water, having the service available and everything we provide. So with that, there's several motions here. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll go through those and just to kind of bring it to a fine point, and then I'm sure you'll want to open it up, either ask me comments or questions and open it up. But what we're, what we're um, suggesting or recommending tonight is that you authorize the general manager to sign the revised agreements in attachment one and, one and two, which basically the, the nut of those changes are to um, charge pure source water and child goals mutual of $1 per month service connection fee for each entity they serve. So for a resident, that'd be $12 a year for, if you take that scenario. And then uh, to have these contracts commence on December 1st, 2024, and change the renewal contract period for pure source from two years to five year interval. So they're both on the same interval. So if, if that's not something that the direction you wanna go, that, um, well, first of all, we also direct you to, um, uh, direct us to work with them to address, to address a, a billing frequency. So. Uh, I'm sure our accounting firms can, can, can sort that out, whether it's monthly, yearly, or whatever. Just want to be clear on that. And then authorize the general manager to execute the agreements once modified as shown or as other um, changes that you, you recommend. And then four, authorize. Do, do, we don't have that available. Okay, let's pull those up so everybody can see them. Thank you. Um, to because if we're going to December 1st to authorize the general manager, which will be, you know, Melanie, uh, to approve an extension of the current unmodified contracts through November 30th, right? So we all know we have these, the, the, cert, the current one will apply till December 1st if we go this way. And then um, author, authorize the general manager uh, to execute them um, uh, and revisit the fee. Uh, Oh, and that's it. number five is an or authorize the general manager to execute the agreements without noted modifications and then revisit it in two years. Or the last item is propose something different. So you got three kind of categories, right? The one dollar a month, the do nothing, or propose something different. So I'll stop there. Be glad to answer any questions. Or yeah, thank you. Why don't Why don't we first have um public comment, yeah. And I'm not gonna limit to, to two minutes. Um, so uh, is there public comment? Yeah, this is the time for y'all to come on up, yeah. <laughs> and thank you for honoring that. Uh, they asked, I said, if they were gonna be constrained to two minutes and I thought that you might wanna take a different approach. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I can do it in probably six, but. Thank you all, um, and thank you to Ron you and Melanie and your staff um, for meeting with us and involving us in this process. I appreciate that. Um, as far as the chart that I got here for you um, that I brought out on page one, um, the reason I included this is previous years we've had our intertie usage shown um, as part of the board packet, and I thought that it, um, it stood out to me when I looked at it that um, 2016 was a huge year for us in using the inner tie and the rest of the years where they weren't. And I apologize, bottom of chart one there, uh, 2022 and 2024 have an imperceptible red line <laughs> because there's a tiny little bit of use, but on that scale, it doesn't really show. Um, so, um, sorry, just catching up with where I was here. Um, over 18 years, we've used 1.7 million gallons but 80% of that was in that 2016 year. Um, we, we've used every, gallons for everything, but you know the, the graph here is in units. Um, so out of 2,234 20, 20, units used total, um, you know, 
the bulk of that 1,795 was in 2016. Um, over the past four years, we've actually only used the inner tie as a precautionary measure, but we made repairs to the middle portion of our system. The way it's set up, we can pump water in from the inner tie and um, make a repair in the middle and use valves to isolate so that we can just have fewer numbers of people turned off while we make the repair. We have a 2,500 gallon tank at the inner tie, um, but in none of the past four years have we used more than 1,000 gallons from the inner tie, which means we actually didn't need to use it at all. Um, we uh, could have simply just relied on our own water that we had in the tank, because we can fill our, the tank our own, on our, with our own water as well. Um, so from an operator standpoint, we were just being prudent in case things didn't go as planned during the repair. But as you know, wearing the manager's hat, I kind of wish we hadn't activated it. So I could tell you we hadn't used the inner tie at all during the past four years. Um, in reality, we have used it, but in just a very small amount. We continue to make system improvements. And over the past four years, the only times we've used it, we, we average just 326 gallons a year. Um, so for, for perspective, that's kind of why I wanted to have the chart was give you a perspective, 326 gallons in each year. Um, less than half a unit. So that averages four gallons per household um, for our customers during the last two cycles of our renewing, renewing this agreement. We actively seek out and leak and repair leaks um, where we don't have meters yet. We listen periodically at service connections for leaks. Um, twice in recent years, we also paid a professional company to do a full system leak investigation for us. Um, they actually did not find any leaks. Um, we were surprised at that. We thought they would. Um, we redoubled our efforts then on metering, figuring that somebody must, we must have a customer who's using too much water because we knew that our water use was higher than it ought to be based on what we knew from our metered customers. Um, but this year we actually did find the leak we've been seeking. It was a small hole in the main and amounted to more than 6,000 gallons a day, but instantly went away the day after we um, fixed the leak. So that was amazing and we were really pleased, but the leak investigations didn't find this leak and more customer meters wouldn't have either. Um, it was just a difficult one. It, it was never surfacing and just was percolating back into the groundwater, let's hope. Um, and as we talked earlier, an update to the board memo regarding meters, we did install three additional meters in the past week. Um, I didn't just all load them right before this meeting, it seems like it, but we had these two scheduled and then I actually got a call on Sunday night saying, our water won't shut off all the way and we need to replace the valve at our house, can you come out? And I said, so I came out on yesterday and installed another meter. So anyway, we're now at 52%, uh, uh, 40 out of 77 connections. Um, if you flip over to the other side, chart two shows our rate of meter installations. We increased from one connection um, in 2018 to nine last year. Um, and keeping our current pace will be fully metered by the end of 2028. And that's what I propose doing is um, keeping eight or nine meters a year um, until we're done. Um, we do those all ourselves. You know, Ron introduced us as the owners and the operators of Pure Source. We are the entire Pure Source. And you'll notice I'm wearing my engineering shirt because I. I have to have a different job to supplement my water habit um, <laughs> because they, you know, we don't we don't make a lot of money running a water system. So um, let's see. Um, so yes, we've been increasing that and we'll get fully metered by the end of 2028 at this rate. Love to do it sooner if we can come up with resources to do that. The deadline imposed by SB 552 for full metering is 2032. Um, we disagree with the proposed uh, monthly standby charge of $77 per month. Um, we recommend charging us the 5 8 meter charge um, because that's about, we're actually not quite getting a full 5 8 um, meter service um, at our connection, but um, we recommend charging us that $80.44 in any month that we use water from the district um, in addition to the water quantity charges as we normally do. That would include the one month each year when we turn on the inner, inner tie for the required testing and inspection, as well as any other months that we request that the, um, the meter be activated. The reason we oppose the recommendation by staff is that the proposed service charge is almost the same as you charge for a regular residential 5 8 water meter. 
um, and those folks use water on a regular basis. Um, we have a one inch meter, but it provides less, as I said, it provides less than typical five eighths flow. Um, your typical full price customers use large amounts of water every month. They don't have to request permission to use the water. They don't have to come before the board every two years. Um, they don't have to create water conservation plans and they pay a lower rate per unit than we pay. Charging us nearly your standard water monthly service rate with extra restrictions and requirements and then charging a higher quantity charge doesn't seem equitable to us at all. Um, because this is an emergency intertie, the district doesn't have to develop capacity for us. The intertie tapped into an existing line, so there's no additional piping for you to maintain. Um, and the other costs associated with the air gap or inspecting the air gap, turning on the water and maintaining the meters should be covered easily by our, the paying for the service in the months that we do use water. Uh, I, I probably spent 20 hours or more over the past few months discover, discussing the inner tie with your staff, preparing for this meeting. You probably could have installed three more meters during that amount of time or looked for more leaks. We support the recommendation to increase the, the term of our agreement to five years to reduce the burden on both of our systems, just so we don't have to talk about this quite so often. Um, we don't think, however, that it would make sense to revisit our fee in two years, as suggested by possible board action number five. Um, seems like we just stick to the five years. $77 or times 12 months amounts to $924. Um, that's the cost to purchase about four and a half meters for us. Um, charging us for the inner tie that we try desperately not to use only delays us getting our system fully metered. It's a negligible contribution to your budget, but it has a big impact on our system finances. While we're privately owned by Jennifer and I, we're not driven by profit. Um, any funds left over after our typical expenses are used to improve the system, mostly by installing meters and fixing leaks. We have increased our rates significantly over the years and put those funds to improving quality and reliability and reducing water use through conservation and water loss effort, reduction efforts. I believe our water use is actually kind of on par with the district, despite not being fully metered yet. Since repairing that leak in May, our June, July, and August, midsummer, uh, full system production, that's what we actually extract from the ground, average 67 gallons per person per day. Um, our average metered customer use during those months was only 46.4, which seems pretty a good number for summer. These numbers are slightly better than the ones in the board packet um, because I included August, so it's slight, slightly different, but even August was less than June and July. And this is without having metered rates or, yeah. So um, I believe our customers are cautious about their usage. We certainly chime it in every newsletter and talk about it every time we see people. Um, and I believe our system is well maintained, especially given the challenges imposed by our size. I mean, we're just this tiny little system that doesn't fit well within the, the big parameters that the world wants us to exist in. Um, again, I hope that you will support charging us the 5 8 inch metered connection fee of $80.44 in any month that we ask that the inner tie be activated. I can take All any right. questions. Thank you. Well, I, I think it might be best that we hear from both because the agreement's similar for both and want to hear what uh, Chalco Neutral says and then then we'll open it up um, to the board for questions. And hopefully you can answer questions as well as our staff. I'm assuming you guys want to talk. <laughs> All right. Good evening. Good evening, board and staff. I am Robert Schultz, member of Trout Gulch Mutual Corporation. I sit on the board as president this term. I've been a homeowner in Aptos for 40 years, being served by Mar Vista Water and now TGW, which acquired Mar Vista starting in 2007 and finishing in 2008. The first item of business when we purchased Mar Vista was to approach Soquel Water for an inner tie in 2008, which was installed and paid for solely by TGW. 
All the annual backflow tests are paid for, for by TGW. Over the 14 years the intertie has been in place, we have used the intertie a total of eight times. The times, uh, the first time was to test to see if the intertie, of course, even worked. That time um, it did, and a total less than 200,000 gallons have been used and needed and used. It has been years since we have called or needed water. There have been several substantial fires in our area that um, we furnished all the water necessary for the fire department to fight without having to ask SoCal Water to open up the inner tie. Since TGW was formed, we have brought an antiquated water system up to state standards and beyond. All of our members are radio metered, all wells are metered, remote SCADA viewing and control capabilities are in place. 95% of our mains have been replaced with six inch C900 pipe with new service connections and new valves. Tanks have been refurbished and a new 30,000 gallon tank has been added at the top of Skyward Drive. All of this has been paid for by large encumbrance on our members. At this time, two thirds of our members are paying more for their high quality system than they would pay if they were Soquel Creek users. We are not looking for a customer relationship with Soquel Creek, but rather we see Soquel simply as an insurance service when either critical infrastructure is impacted or an extreme environmental disaster occurs. As such, we do not consider ourselves to be treated equitably when approach is the same as it might be for a Soquel Creek customer. And with that, I'll turn it over to my vice, vice president. Thank you, Robert. And thank you, Martin, too, for your pre presentation. So, so I, I kind of like Martin's idea that when we use water that we pay for the water, we pay for the cost already for someone to come out, uh, a meter charge at that point might be appropriate. But it is the case that the last time we used the inner tie at all was more than five years ago. So this is an insurance policy like, uh, like your umbrella policy. You hope you never need to use it. And we're pretty successful at not using it. Um, our, our board is not looking. Uh, our board is looking for a consideration for the fact that we have spent the money that we have to get the system in a situation where it fully meets state standards and beyond. And the cost of that system is quite burdensome on our, uh, our members. And there is no way for us to eat any of these charges. Any of these charges will get passed on to the, our members dollar for dollar. All right, thank you. Is there any more public comment? No. Nope. All right. We need a motion to close the public. No. no. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, yeah, I've got questions as well, but go ahead. Well, mine isn't so much a question. It's just, you know, I heard both of the districts and read that you know they haven't had to use it very often and you know averaging every other year almost basically over the last 16 to 17 years and so that's great um and i also feel like we have people in our district it was mentioned that people use a lot of water but we have people in our district that don't use much or but they still have to pay a fee to have that water available in case of an emergency. And so I, I kind of feel like it is kind of an insurance policy and to have a sustainable groundwater basin as well um, is where the district has put a lot of effort and money into. So to me, it just doesn't seem like a dollar per person or $12 per customer per year. It seems like a lot for that insurance whether it's an umbrella policy or whether it's an policy to have a sustainable groundwater basin to provide emergency water. Okay. Any other directors, questions or comments? I had a couple comments. Um, 
Number one, I just wanted to remind ourselves that our district is fully funded by our rate payers. So when the district has to pay administration, transport, and infrastructure costs, we are in fact carrying the smaller water entities. I wanted to um, also point out that um, I did a, a quite a bit of research, spent many days talking to comparable water districts that are in the exact same situation as we're talking about this evening. Um, the, um, the others have really paved this road before us. So um, just for an example, um, there's the North Gualala Water District in Mendocino County. They um, carry emergency services, water service connections uh, with smaller entities, and they charge between $10 and $30 per customer connection. Also, Cayugas Water District in SLO charges between $5 and $20 per customer connection. This is per month. This is all what we're talking about per month. Uh, the Monterey Peninsula water charges between $5 and $15 per month per customer. The Cambria Community Services District in SLO charges between $5 and $15. So I think that we could agree that a dollar is a symbolic value here. Um, I also want to say that um, during this time of climate disruption, there's a lot of increasing emergency possibilities. I don't know if you've been up to Nicene Marks lately, but they're getting ready for another giant prescribed burn. I was up um, through there uh, this weekend, and there's 1,400 huge piles of wood just about ready to be lit. And these are areas right behind Redwood and right behind Trout Gulch. And I know they're prescribed burns and it's to alleviate um, fire, but it's also terrifying. Um, so remembering just again, this is an emergency water service connection. It's not about water, it's about infrastructure. And finally, I would um, argue that um, because it's a five-year contract, there could be an inflation indexing or cost of living adjustment that's built in, and I would, hard, I would argue for that. Thank you. Uh, any other directors? Erla? Yeah, when I looked at the $1 a month, I was thinking, oh, this is really not enough to do anything in terms of, you know, when, if the district had to really act it's not enough money at a given month to support the staff members' time and administrative time, but it's an insurance policy that amount that you would be paying accumulates and it becomes part of the cost of your insurance to keeping this thing going, your share, to keep our uh, emergency systems going. And uh, so I thought, I was kind of surprised. I thought it would, might be considered a bargain, a dollar a month per customer for the assuredness of having a constant water supply. Uh, I, you know, I would welcome some further comment from you, but it seems to me like a, a pretty cheap insurance policy. Rochelle? say something with the microphone on um yeah this i can see both sides i'm looking at it from you know both sides i understand um that especially pure source is you know really just scraping the barrel in a lot of ways because it's small you know 77 homes but i d also thought one dollar a month was not such a bad deal so um when, when you need it, it's going to be there. And we do have to do things like put together the staff report and do all the negotiations. That probably took up five years worth of a dollar a month, you know, of, um, of funds. And so um, from my perspective, because I've been in the administration side and I know what it takes time-wise to do things, I, I 
I'm not sure that that's unreasonable. It seems like it, it is. Um, you, you are very different systems, but at least we'd give you both the same the same rate. And whether it is a now the five eighths meter charge versus one inch, I don't know if those charges were even in your analysis. Well, we we looked at a wide range of, of potential appropriate fees. We we looked at it again. Well. Not through the the value that, that that they receive. That we wanted to say that's your judgment call on whether this is appropriate. But through our eyes to our customers, and 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 even within that, there was a wide range of uh, ways to evaluate it. We tried to land at something that just seemed reasonable, not overly burdensome, but recognize. Um, that, that there is some value there. Uh, you're right. I mean, the, the, the you, I'm. There are charges besides just the water. Just putting the staff port. Martin said 20 hours. I I probably put 20 hours in this, and then there are other staff. I know Nick and Melanie spent some time, but, um, so yeah, there's different ways to look at it. At the end of the day, we tried to be what we thought was. Fair and reasonable for having that uh, uh, insurance policy, if you will, um, and and kind of strike a, a, a middle low ground, if you will. If that makes sense. Yeah, I, I've I've managed very small water system, and um, in Davenport, so I have an understanding of how even a small amount can be big for what you're doing, and so. Kind of ambivalent in a way, you know. I kind of go back and forth from listening to everybody. So let's see if um, you can help me. Me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so thanks for that perspective, Michelle, and thank you very much, Jennifer, for doing the research. Um, I'm I'm to blame for the dollar a month in part because I had discussions with Ron and. I mean, I just want to formalize an agreement here. And to me, a dollar a month didn't seem like a lot of money. I don't want to hurt your pocketbooks. But uh, what would you do if we didn't have this inner disconnection when you have an emergency? Um, I can tell you, being a, a good neighbor, we, we wouldn't want to see you without this 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 connection because things can happen. Um, the so you know our our normal customers. Martin talked about charging for just when they use it. The you know we we charge our customers. What's the five eighths meter charge? Sixty dollars a month. Eighty. Okay, I'm yeah, eighty forty four. I mean, they're paying every month for customers. So, and it's different because you don't wouldn't use it every month. But what what would you do if you don't have this connection? Isn't it worth a very minimal charge? That's really more just formalizing the agreement. You want to respond? Per month charge is out is out of the question because I'm not I, like Martin's suggestion. Sorry to say that. I mean, I I I, I think a per month charge for all the reasons that you said make makes some sense, and. Uh, so the the question is, you know, it is a dollar for dollar. We're changing the rates for our, our members. Understood. There's no question about it. And it as I, as as Rob mentioned, our fixed rates are high because it took a lot to turn this five mile system into something that wasn't disgusting. Mm -hmm. And so there, 
our, our members are already quite burdened by the per month fee. Uh, you can look online. It's $100 a month right now for our users, $101 a month. It's actually $202 every two months that they're currently having to pay in fixed fees. And whatever we agree to, that's going in that. Mm -hmm. So, and, uh, and you don't charge for capacity if they use more water? Oh, no, of course we do. Okay. Four tiers. Yeah, we're, we're completely metered. We have four tiers. Our, our high-end tiers are quite high. And, um, and it happens to be that, that our members are paying more for water. Most of our members are paying more for their water already than they would under your rate structure. So, I mean, that, that's the challenge. Um, I, I'm, we're not saying we won't pay a per month rate. Um, but we'd like it to be as low as possible. I understand. <laughs> if I didn't make that clear. <laughs> I understand. Yeah, go ahead. I, I think you, you make a, an interesting point that strikes me like, and I, you guys have done a great job, by the way. I want to compliment you on the way you've upgraded that system. Um, but it, it sounds like only about a 1% increase a month. And I think with your communications with your customers, you know, feel free to explain to them that this is their insurance policy. Like if we have an emergency, you know, that's why there's this extra dollar a month. Um, and I think most people would understand that. Yeah, please. You asked the question, what would we do if we didn't have the inner tie? Um, we didn't for probably four decades um, and we got by just fine. Um, what happened, I say got by just fine. Back in those days, the system was not great. My dad actually got involved with this water system because he purchased a lot up there, built a house, and they didn't always have water. Mm. So what happened was he knew something about how things worked and how to keep it running, and so he um, would get involved and go fix things when um, when things broke. And, but what happens is um, basically... In the case of um, like the last four years, when we've just we would just not pressurize those zones, um, we would just have to have everybody from the upper portion of the system down off while we um, made the repair to the lower section. Um, I would also consider if if it, if I didn't have the center tie, putting a larger tank at the bottom of our system mm -hmm. because we don't have a lot of customers and we do have good communication with them. We can actually say. Hey, we're doing this thing today. Try not to use water. You know, don't wash your car today. Do laundry another day. Mm -hmm. People are fine with it. They're like, yeah, great. Now, you know, I mean, literally, I'm out there with the shovel, so they they all know us. They we wave. I know half my customers by name, so um, that's what we would do. Is we would just get by. You know, the reality is, we all think that water is critical, important infrastructure, and it is on a big, long term perspective basis, but. On a day-to-day -day basis, you can do without water for you know several hours while a repair gets made or something like that. We just try and keep the we just try and keep the water main pressurized because it's better for um, you know avoiding having bacteria come in and that sort of thing. I don't I don't want to have anybody's water out. That's why I chose to activate the inner tide to make repairs, um, and you know. I wanted to, to not do it so that I could say we didn't use the inner time, but it just makes sense as an operator. It cost hardly anything to do that. Yeah. So that was good. Um, but the, the director says, what about a fire? Um, if, if you're, we can't you know, get enough, support. we can't get enough water from you guys through our inner tide to make a dent in a fire. 16 gallons a minute is nothing. I mean, okay. um, I, in my experience, I, we were actually adjacent to the CZU fire. It was, three feet from my garage. Um, we had fire tanks on the property adjacent to us. We're adjacent to a retreat center. Fire department didn't use them. Um, they, there was one tank they did pull from, and I think that they would pull from our main tanks if we needed it. But I mean, I, I, I believe the inner tie is a great asset for us to have. Um, I just, we, the whole premise of this discussion with Ron and Melanie was just making it equitable. And I think um, I heard several times um, 
you know, $1 a month, it's $1 a month per customer. So it's really $77. And my issue was comparing the $77 a month to your typical customer who pays $80.44, um, but has no restrictions on how they use the water. If, if there was an option for us to just be a residential customer, pay $80.44, never have to come in and plead our case and um, use the water anytime we felt made sense, I'd probably go for that option to avoid the hassle, the conflict, the discussions, all that. Um, but to, to say that it's equitable when we use almost no water, we have all these restrictions. We have to, when I think one of the things Ron didn't mention was that when we are actually using the inner tie, we have to have emergency water use restrictions in place. So we have to ask our customers, hey, be careful, don't use any more water than you have to, only flush, you know, if it's yellow, let it mellow, that kind of thing. We have to, you know, ask for emergency conservation measures while we're using the water. And, um, you know, as far as the actual burden to the district, I, I see the, the only significant burden is these discussions. And for years I've advocated for, why do we have to get together and talk about this every two years? Why don't we just, from here on out, just say, this is our agreement, unless there's a reason to, to discuss it, let's not. Let's just avoid having these conversations about it, avoid spending a 40 hours preparing the discussions and doing the work, and let's just get back to doing other work like installing meters. So thank you for, for answering the question. All right. Um, I don't think there's any more need for me, for you. I'm, I'm ready to make a motion. Okay. Tom? So I'm going to make the mo motion one and two and three. Okay. So four, one, two, and three. So you're not doing four word where you reopen things. No, nope, I'm fine. Oh, oh, four, two, yeah. Mm -hmm. A four. Sorry, including Five four. Is... Yes. Because that just carries us through to November 30th. Yes, just not not changing to a higher fee or a lower fee or revisiting the fee in two years. Um, I think this this is a compromise, I think, on what it could be and what other and thank you, Jennifer, for looking that up. But what other districts would charge? I think it's good for everyone in the district that gets water at any time to be contributing to our sustainability. So anyway, so one through four. And in three, um, if Just, uh, Pure Source or Trout Gulch doesn't want to do it, then they don't have to, right? That's what three says, that uh, basically execute the agreements once modified and prescribed. Um, but they, if, if, if they, they want to enter into the revised agreement. Right, December 1st, the idea is to put, um, oh, go ahead, George. To put a deadline on it so we weren't languishing like, well, is, you don't sign the agreement, what's that mean? And so what, one through four recommends is uh, the ag current agreement stays in place till December 1st or in the November 30th. And then if they choose to do the agreement that the board decides here tonight, that would needs to kick in on December 1st to 2024. So there would have to be a desire from. Yeah. There's no agreement if two parties don't come yeah. to the table. Yeah. And if the terms are 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 not palatable to them, they don't have to enter into an agreement. Yeah. Go ahead. One. Well, first of all, there's a motion. Is there a second for it? I'll second it. I just want to make one distinction. So you do want them to come back in five years? Two years. Five years. Two years or five years? Five years. It's two to five year interval. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll make it clear that it'll be a five-year interval. It's five years. Yeah, to change Both. it from a two to five-year. So there is a good no. reason for that. It's just to review our systems together, and that is an important part of maintaining a relationship, exchanging water. So I think it's always important to come back, even if no changes ever take place. So you're not making five, which is coming back at any time period, to, to revisit the, the – it's a five-year agreement. Five-year contract. Five five year contract. So the rates are one dollar apply for the entire five years. 
Well, actually, five it says two years for Russo's daughter. Or his son. But he's he's not making five. That's an or. And when no, you get down to that, was an or. I'm doing one through four. Okay. And are you still? Who was who was second? Seconding it. You still, still second, second with knowing. I wanted to clarify that because I heard. Okay. So I discussion. I would really agree, like to have a cola written in there for increasing the dollar symbolic amount each year by a few percentage points. Anyone for that? It's symbolic. Okay. I, I, for me, it's fine to revisit that in five years. Okay. It's yeah. and, and if we, based on the information you provided, Jennifer, if we were going to do it, it'd be somewhere between 5 and $20. Yeah. So this is... Um, I don't know if there's other differences in, in those agencies and I'd like a little bit of investigation on yeah. that. Yeah. But but to me this is just it's symbolic in a way. Exactly. Yeah. And having an agreement in place. Right? Do you have anything else? No, I just had that question because when he made the motion I thought he said it was five years and I thought it was five years. And so I Okay. <laughs> Five years, sorry. Five years. So there's any more discussion? Okay. Well, take a, take a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Passes unanimously. <clears throat> Thank you for coming tonight. Exactly what we talked about, the dollar... Per month, per, per month, per, per, per person. person, per connection, five-year agreement. Oh, wait, it, yeah. And then I would suggest it a one-time deal at the end of the year or something. President Jaffe. Yes. Ron, in his wisdom of the evening, did suggest to me that perhaps you and I could go to the Trout Gulch Mutual Board meeting if you would like us to, if this goes to your board to have as an agenda item that we could go in and speak to them if they had questions. I'd be happy to. And likewise, for peer source as well. <laughs> but I won't knock on doors. <laughs> okay. I mean, we just, we want to be good neighbors, and symbolic seem, seems like the board is okay with that, rather than charging, like, you know, five twenty dollars Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you for coming. And, Martin, thank you for continuing to update the system, and this was very useful, the information you provided. Thank you. Yeah. So that brings us to another Ron item. <laughs> Oh, Taj, I can't, I'm really looking forward to that. <laughs> Melanie? Nothing. You see nothing over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw I'll be a recipient of Taj to four masterpiece. We, we're having a contest to guess what's underneath there. <laughs> anyway, is this your item, Melanie? So typically tracy is one who kind of takes the reins for developing and writing the resolution when somebody retires so i'd like tracy to take this one on okay tracy well, thank you um and usually as you know i hand it off to you guys uh, so uh as you'll find in your packet tonight there is resolution 2413 honoring ron duncan for his service to the district and i believe that president jaffe will be reading that resolution uh, word for word. So I'd like to hand it over to you if you're okay with that.
there's no public to comment. So, <laughs> so I'll read the resolution. So this is resolution number 24-13. It's a resolution of the Board of Directors of the Soquel Creek Water District in appreciation of Ron Duncan upon his retirement, March 29, 2004 to September 30th, 2024. So the Board of Directors of Soquel Creek Water District at its September 24th, 2024 meeting made the following findings. Recitals. Should we first, uh, I'll read in then, then I'm sure it'll pass, Ron. Recitals. <laughs> Whereas Ron Duncan was hired by the district in March 20, 2004 as the conservation coordinator, was promoted to the conservation customer service field manager in March 2006, and then to the district's general manager in 2015, showcasing his commitment to advancing water resources, service, and leadership to our community over the span of two decades. And whereas Ron is retiring from the Soco Creek Water District after serving the public and our community for a total of 27 years, having made substantial contributions to programs, projects, and initiatives throughout Santa Cruz County with a keen focus on environmental responsibility and long-term sustainability. He's continually, his con con he's continually demonstrated a think-outside-of-the-box mentality, implementing many new technologies, creative program ideas, and solutions which have greatly benefited the community by providing a variety of beneficial tools and resources. And whereas Ron has been a driving force behind the Pure Water Soquel PWS project aimed at replenishing the Santa Cruz Mid-County Groundwater Basin, reducing ocean discharge, creating a seawater intrusion barrier, and promoting sustainable water management, which exemplifies his commitment to protecting our region's coastal ecosystem and showcases his broad vision and action-oriented style. And whereas Ron's leadership in both the district's PWS project and the Santa Cruz Mid-County Groundwater Agency played a key role in developing the region's groundwater sustainability plan, the first to be approved by the state of California, ensuring the future of our community with a reliable drought resistant water supply while protecting the critically endangered groundwater basin. And whereas Ron inspires his staff and generates trust by always making time to listen and providing guidance and resources when needed. He fosters a management style that promotes thoughtful and efficient decision-making, recognizing that any mistakes that are made provide an opportunity for learning, growth, and future improvement, and not making the same mistake twice. He is a kind spirit and respected professional with an innate sense that few leaders are able to, to master, giving his team the autonomy to shine while still holding everyone accountable. And whereas Ron has been a tireless representative of the district and is a respected leader in the water industry, having served on the American Water Works Association Utility Council and Water Reuse Board of Directors, advocating for water reuse and sustainable sustainability practices throughout the state. He's his he's his his he's he is steadfast in embodying a true essence of public service and forges enduring relationships with colleagues, staff, and a broad network locally, statewide, and beyond. And whereas Ron is dedicated to reducing his climate footprint and respecting his health by recycling to and from work, even in the most inclement weather, including howling wind, violent rain, and snow, well, maybe not snow, and has a personal commitment to environmental stewardship and healthy living, and Whereas Ron is known for his ability to lighten the room with his stories, 
anecdotes and experiences, sharing his wisdom, wit, humor, humility, and sometimes a little bit of his southern drawl. And whereas Ron is a lifelong long learner who is never short on distributing resources and suggestions to further one's knowledge or instilling thoughtful and inspiring lessons which embrace continuous improvement and the pursuit of progress over perfection. And whereas Ron will forever be remembered for his half vegetable pot pie cooking in the break room toaster <laughs> oven, that's one I hadn't heard of. <laughs> and whereas Ron has been the bastion of the Soquel Creek Water District's step toward the future, his positive legacy on the district will be felt for many years to come. And now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Directors of the Soquel Creek Water District that Ron Duncan is hereby recognized for his leadership, his dedication to the district for over 20 years, and to his countless contributions to the district, the community, the greater water community of California. We all join in extending our sincere appreciation for his loyalty, leadership, and years of service as we wish him an adventure-filled and well-deserved retirement. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. And, and we better pass this. <laughs> <laughs> Can I make the motion that we pass this? Uh, I certainly. Yeah. Okay. I can't <laughs> There's no public. <laughs> <laughs>
decide whether to have you be our general manager. I think the things that I thought then have held true the same time. All this time that you are somebody I could trust completely, which I think is really important. Your integrity is just, you know, I, I could always count on that. And, and to always really be trying to do the right thing, always for everybody. So, you know, you can't go wrong. So thank you, Ron. Thank you. Any other board members? Sure. <laughs> you know, I was new. I've only been on the board 10 years. And I came on right before highly ambitious to uh, shake things up a little bit, but not having too much experience to do that, about how to do that. But I did consult with uh, people at Aqua, some Aqua people on what I should do. But uh, when I finally met um, Ron, I just was pretty like, oh, one problem is solved, our next general manager. And it was just a matter of getting there, and I'm so glad. And then when, that right after that, Melanie left, and he got Melanie back, and it was just... <laughs> I, we were ready. We were ready to roll the the board. We knew the methods. Of, by the way, we you know to pursue you know sustainability. We knew knew what we had to do, and uh, we added some science by going you know just. I went. I was a nobody at the first water reuse I went to, but I learned a lot, uh, and I think we had lots of really good discussions. I was just really. That was at the beginning of, and I've heard customers and I've been campaigning and said, this is the first time anybody in the district really tried to and accomplished doing something about solving our overdraft problem. And really, I was just stunned that customers realized the impact that the new, this district team had um, had and how... The right, the right leadership, fantastic team, strong board. It was a combination that it started with the general manager. I really appreciate that. And it didn't hurt to have a great sense of humor because there were a lot of times when we needed a good sense of humor. And I'll always remember that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Carl. Rochelle? As you, you probably recall, I told you I thought you were too nice and you were going to get eaten alive. I remember that. And um, you're still very nice, but you have a definite tough side to you that I didn't see in the beginning. And um, I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm always happy to be wrong, but I was worried about that. Thank you. Jennifer, did you have anything? I mean, I'm just such a little newbie. I don't know that I'm qualified to speak, but I've loved having every minute with Ron, and I'm going to miss him so much. And he's been such a good mentor, not just to me, but he has been a great mentor to me, but to all of us. Like, like thank you. Thank you. And I'll, um, as Rochelle says, I agree with what's been said. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Ron, I'm... I, I've trusted you to uh, see through the vision. You had the same vision the board that the board had on on sustainability, and and uh, you you had the uh, you have the background to understand the complexities and to um, make those complexities just something that that you get through um, and you've changed a lot since I've known you which is you know, the 20 years um, you you've bettered yourself you've you've gone uh, for additional education and and learning and it's made you more effective and you know, and tougher perhaps and but um, I'm very grateful that we've had you as our general manager, and um, you've you've taken us to the promised land, and um, and I'm sure that 
that uh, Melanie will continue. You're in good hands. Yes. So thank you so much. Uh, appreciate your, you know, you do the job of general manager, but you also live it. I mean, it, it's, it's more than a job for you. And the district, the customers, the board, um, all benefit from that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, well, the night the night has a couple more things. Um, we do have a short video, and also I think it's a good time for Taj to present his retirement creation. Ah, uh, I've been hoping maybe something. And Mark, Martin, and Jennifer, you guys have to see this. So. Um, this is kind of a tradition that um, Taj has done in terms of uh, creating creating special things when people retire. <laughs> oh. That is amazing. It even has the logo. What does it say?
<laughs> well, not so we have. Uh, oops, hold on. I think it's starting. Um, okay, one last item that we want to share in item seven point four is uh, the vid- a video that we put together for Ron. Okay. It's okay. No. We're ready. We are ready for snaps. Yeah, let's sure. Watch. It's just like a movie, right? Yeah. She has movie snacks. Yeah, Ron gets to. <laughs> if you don't eat it, right? Yeah. This is this is this is it. They got they. That looks good. That's all it is. That's all it is. Too. I already got that, so everything's good. Did you get a Did you get Did you get one? Thank you, Carlo. Did you get one of these? Who was it? Yes, I know. <laughs> yes, I am. Thank you. This one? No. Egg whites. I love these ones. Oh, you know what that one's called, Doug? It's called sure. the coma cookie. Oh. Right? Mm-hmm. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you. What was that? So, for those of you who. <laughs> So for those of you who don't know, we have an intern from Your Future is Our Business. His name is Seth Campbell. He started with us in August, and he's Seth Campbell. He's a first-year Cabrillo student, and he um, came to us through Your Future is Our Business. So we thought it was quite fitting. He's been doing some um, graphic design, some social media, some video production, um, he'll be working with us to take some photos of some of our infrastructure. And uh, he has helped put together this video. I think it's really fitting, again, because I think, Rod, you've been such a proponent and a supporter of youth and education uh, and our collaboration with entities at the district. So this is a video montage of photos um, over the years. Because of the technology, I'm not quite sure if you're going to hear the music, but um, it, it does have some, some music on it, but you may or may not hear it. I don't know. Okay.
Very impressive. Oh, sorry. Double. <laughs> very bad. <laughs> Is that another? Mm -hmm. No, the sculpture. I just made it back that. <laughs> I never saw that. That was such a cool. Euro, pure water. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Carla brought their treats. We got some energy. Thank you all. I'm so honored. So thanks. Yeah. Okay. So with that, meeting is adjourned. We're going in the open part of the meeting. We're going into closed session. And then we'll come out. Then adjourn. <laughs>